welcome to Doubles and Trebles. Darts may not have been on your TV screens for the last couple of weeks, but there has been a PDC Super Series event, Volume 2. Four days back-to-back action, Players' Championship format, straight knockout. We've covered the first uh, Super Series and there was plenty going on at the second Super Series and Pie Man had it all covered, absolutely everything covered. It fell on a quite a busy week, Pie Man, is that right? Yeah, cheers, Adam. It's a bit of a strange one scheduling-wise for me. I mean, the PDC lined this second Super Series up the Tuesday to Friday of Cheltenham week. So, I mean, if you were picking a midweek, you probably wouldn't pick that one, to be honest. The entire sporting world kind of have their eyes on Cheltenham. And meanwhile, we have four days of darts going on in the background at the same time as all the racing. So, as a channel that tries to cover racing and darts, wasn't the best timing, to be honest. But... um, (laughs) Look, we managed to keep our eyes uh, eyes on both prizes just about. Um, yeah, four days of action last week, Tuesday to Friday, and we had four different winners. And uh, it was, uh, you know, made notable by a couple of absentees. Well, one absentee in particular, Michael van Gerwen opting not to play in this event. He remained in the Netherlands. Um, an interesting decision. We've seen him do things like this before, and he hasn't been in the best form, MVG. So, decided to give himself a week off here and, and, and stayed, but... Other than that, we we pretty much had a full complement. I mean, Gary Anderson um, did take some time off towards the end of the week, but pretty much everyone else was there and it was a, a cracking four days. Yeah, so day one, pretty much out of nowhere, Pie Man. Brendan Dolan, a man that's been around the tour for many, many years, the history maker. Um, but yeah, out of nowhere to, to win day one, as it were. But I mean, I was just looking at his results, Pie Man. He beat Michael Smith in the final, Joe Cullen in the semi final, Damon Hetter in the quarter final. Gerwin Price earlier in the day, I mean, fully deserved win. Yeah, this was no flash in the pan. It was uh, it was certainly out of nowhere, and it's the biggest surprise winner um, in recent history, at least. I think you probably could have got Brendan Dolan at whatever price you wanted, to be honest, probably 200, 250 to 1 to win this event. I mean, just for a bit of context, they were still putting him in as a 100 to 1 shot the day after. So, I mean, this really did come out of nowhere. Um as you say, he calls himself the history maker. And this might have been the best day in his darts history, to be honest. I mean, averages of 111 versus Jason Law, 106 against Hetter, 110 against Scott Mitchell. He beat Gerwin Price, he beat Joe Cullen, and then he beats Michael Smith in the final. There's no fluke about it. It was an astonishing performance. Um, afterwards, he, a great interview with Brendan. He's one of darts' nice guys. And he, he kind of said that, he had the confidence when he got to the latter stages because he's been there and done it before. He hasn't been there for a long time, granted, but that was his eighth PDC win, believe it or not. Um, I mean, a lot of people remember Brendan Dolan for being the um, first man to hit a televised nine data with a double in, double out format. He uh, he famously did it in Ireland, um, which was uh, against James Wade in 2011. But I mean, 10 years ago, that kind of tells you how long it has been since Brendan's been um, playing up at the top. But he kind of said to um, in his interview afterwards that the standard has gone up so much and he's had to raise his own standard. And he talked about how he could do it on the practice board. But it's just been a case of trying to bring that to an actual event. And I thought I was delighted for him, to be honest. But Michael Smith, who he beat in the final, also had a fantastic day. And, uh, he, you know, that was a bit of a theme throughout the week. He, he looked back close to his best Michael Smith. Uh, we had Joe Cullen and Alan Suta making the semi-finals. Joe Cullen, an absolute mark of consistency in recent weeks. And what more can we say about Alan Suter? I mean, we've we've discussed him on the channel. He continues to uh, produce at massive prices. I think the cat's out of the bag a little bit with him now. But, um, yeah, fantastic to see him still doing well. Dirk van Dijvenborder is the other man I would mention on that day. I mean, some outrageous averages. And, and again, that was a theme of the week too. But, yeah, brilliant from Dolan. Yeah, so Brendan Dolan was a theme going into day two as well, Pine Man. He made the semi-final there, having won on day one, as we've mentioned. Um, and on yeah, on day two, he's beat the likes of Wade Cullen um, and others along the way until he came up short against Gerwin Price in the semi-final, only by the odd leg, averaging 104. So Dolan continued his form into day two, but it was Price that made the final. Um, I think his first final of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Um where he beat uh, Luke Humphreys, um, one of our five to follow players. Um, so Humphreys making his first um, f- uh, senior floor t- uh, uh, final, having made his first TV final a few weeks earlier at the UK Open. So, yeah, Humphreys just coming up short in the final, but priced a deserved winner on day two. Yeah, back in the uh, much more familiar player in the winner's enclosure this time around in the form of Gezi Price, the, the world champ. 
picking up his first victory since becoming world champ. Um, and that was the seventh straight win in finals for Gerwin Price. So he really is a man to get the job done. And he did a really professional job on Luke Humphries in the final, to be honest. He, uh, it was 8-5, but that probably wasn't reflective of the uh, of the game, to be honest. Price was in control throughout, which was a bit of a shame because Humphreys came into it in fantastic nick. And uh, I, I genuinely thought he had a good chance of turning Price over. But he seemed to not quite play how he'd been playing throughout the rest of the day. But... These experiences are going to do Luke Humphreys wonders going forward. I mean, he's had a UK Open final a few weeks ago. He's now had his first Players' Championship final. He's playing the likes of James Wade and Gerwin Price. And he's still a youngster, you know. So, I mean, like, to be having that experience now is only going to stand him in good stead going forward. But back to Price. Produced a day. Uh, his average over the day was just under 103, which is the sixth highest average we've ever seen by a Players' Championship winner in, in history. So... That tells you how well he was playing on the day. Um, very, very impressed with him. Um, but mention Brendan Dolan again. As you say, he played Price in the semi-final. Dolan missed the dart at bullseye to get, to knock Price out and make a second consecutive final. So you've got to think about it there. That is effectively 13 straight wins for Brendan Dolan on the Super Series before uh, you know missing a match dart against the world champion. So the form he's shown there is is just, well, it's bizarre, really, to be honest. Um, you couldn't. Have but we have it, seen it, though, Prime Man. With these, with these events taking back, taking place back to back, there's no, not much time in between to think about your form, or you, you're just flowing, you're carrying on. We saw it with Clayton and Cullen in the, the first time round. Michael Smith won back to back days towards mm-hmm. the back end of last season. So when they're crammed back to back, um, and they're not going home for family, and they're not going out at night in the evenings, obviously. You know, it, it, we have we have seen it happen, and, and it's been been flagged by you in 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 the prices as well. You talked about a bull finish. We've got to talk about Luke Humphreys' semi-final oh. bull finish against Jamie Hugh. I think Humphreys was six five down, won the last two legs, won the last leg against throw on a hundred and twenty two finish. That I thought that was sensational from Humphreys. We know that his finishing is can be top class. We saw that against them. Um, Van Gerwen at the UK Open um, and he's carried it into this event as well. And like you say, if you're going to lose a final, you know, a tour a tour event, be it, if you see what I mean for Luke mm-hmm. Humphries, is just gaining the experience again. I think that um, this final against Price had a different feeling to the Wade one. I thought the Wade final in the UK Open, Humphreys struggled with the pace of James Wade. Um, that excuse is not valid for for the Gerwin Price game. So maybe I don't know, just overawed or a long day, whatever it may be. But it's it's still a learning experience for Humphreys, and he's making waves. Yeah, nothing to worry about. You only have to look at the caliber of player he beat, and I mean, he beat Van Barneveld round one, Peter Wright round two, he beat Dirk, and let's give a mention to Jamie Hughes as well. By the way, who could have easily been the story of this day? Probably should have made the final, missed match starts against Humphreys, but. You know, we've been a bit of a critic of Jamie Hughes in recent months on this channel. He's been an easy target in these draw brackets because he just hasn't been playing up to his ranking. But there's a reason behind that. You know, he needed an operation on his elbow. He's clearly been playing with quite a serious injury. He's had time off to have that injury now. Come back a lot quicker than I would have anticipated, but come right back to form as well. And he was brilliant today uh, on this particular day. He could have easily beaten Humphreys and it wouldn't have been... um, undeserved either. He, he was averaging around the ton, ton mark all day and that's the Jamie Hughes that managed to get into the world's top 30 and you know for his um, you know for the purposes of, of his ranking I can I can only hope that he produces more performances like that because you want to see these players playing at their best don't you to be honest you don't want to be seeing them um, having injuries sliding down the rankings it's it's not good. Uh, again just a quick mention Dirk made the quarterfinals again again looked like a potential winner before dropping out Neil Zonneveld made his first ever Players' Championship quarterfinal here. Lost to Jamie Hughes in what was a good game. He was in good form all week, Zonneveld. One to watch at massive prices, I think. Um, but yeah, another interesting day and, and a familiar winner. Talking of familiar winners, Pine Man, Johnny Clayton got what we now consider his customary win in these uh, these uh, kind of events. Um, he made three finals. How many finals did he make in the uh, Super Series 1? Two or three? It, well, three. I think he yeah. made three finals. Three Lost finals. Two and won one, yeah, didn't one, he? one on the last day. But anyway, day three, Johnny Clayton has made the final, um, playing very, very well al- al- along the way to get there and um, beating James Wade in a really good final, I thought. Um, Wade peppering the 180s by his standards, if, if you ask me. Um, I'm not used to him seeing him hit so many 180s, but he was doing really well on, on that. 
um, Clayton just pulled pulled away towards the end as we as we used to see in deadly on on it was deadly on the double sixteens on that day. But yeah, day three, pie man. Yeah, well, as you say, it wouldn't be a super series if we didn't have Johnny Clayton picking up a, a title. Uh, the man of the darting year for me so far. I've said it on every video we've done. Um, and it's a, it's a marker of where he's at that he can win this and no one bats an eyelid now. Uh, yeah. he's, he's very much an expected winner. He's been put in as the fourth or fifth favourite for these events now, sometimes even the third favourite, although that's gone out the window with, with Peter Wright, um, you know, re-emerging to form, but we'll get to that. Um but let's have a look at it. In the last month or two, he's won the Masters. He's won uh, two players' championships, lost in two players' championship finals. He's just competitive in every single event. And, and when he goes out, it's a really good performance that knocks him out inevitably every time. Um, he got a, a bit of a toe into the action, to be honest. He had a kindish run at the start, if there is such a thing in this format. He beat, you know, Josh Payne, Ted Everts, Jason Lowe, Steve Lennon. But to me, that's the mark of a champion. When he he's bullying these lower name lower ranked players now, uh, he, he's putting in you know kind of what we expect with Van Gerwen in price when they draw someone in that sort of um, you know ranked outside the top forty or fifty, you expect them to just do a job on them, and that's what Johnny Clayton's doing. He's doing a job on these players. Then he can he can mix it with the big boys as well. He got Jose in the quarter final. Jose, one of the unlucky players of the week to be honest, played really well all week, but maybe didn't get the results to uh, to show it. Um, this quarter final, they averaged 103 apiece. Uh, Jose took a 4-2 lead in the race to six, but then Clayton won it 6-4, and he was finishing. He finished 76, 80, 78, and 121 to win it. Every finish was last start in hand. It was absolute clutch finishing, and we saw that again in the semi final. I mean, he whitewashed Jason Heaver 7-0 in the semi. Um, fair enough, and then you know beat James Wade in the final 8-5. And as you say. Weird, no problems in the in the uh, scoring department, but unusually he was beaten by better finishing. And Johnny Clayton's finishing is just fantastic, and uh, that's what wins your tournaments. You know, if you can hit them finishes at the right time, you're very hard to beat. I think this is a really exciting time for darts. You know, I genuinely do think we've got a new big boy at the top table. I think Clayton is is that good. I don't think it's a flash in the pan. I think he should be priced up in the top four in the betting for every tournament now. And I, I really do think he's got a great chance in the Premier League. I've been saying this for months from when he was 28 to 1. I think he's down to 18 to 1 now. Still still think it's, you know, a value price. I mean, the way he's playing, that tournament's behind closed doors. Couldn't put anyone off it. But um, just a quick mention on other players. Obviously, Wade backs up his UK Open winner. Yeah. Frank's that form, if you will. He's clearly in good nick. Um You know, we, we know he's not best pleased about being outside of the Premier League. Um, equation and stuff and he continues to kind of make a mockery of that decision to be honest when you look at some of the names that are going to be in the Premier League and the, the year that James Wade's having and he's not it's uh, it's a bit sad really but uh, Gabriel Clemens here as well made the semi-final and it was really impressive all day he looked to me he looked like the winner um, going into the last 16 in the quarters but he, he found himself 4-0 down to Wade very quickly and you can't do that against Wade he just it, you know, he started to play better at that point, but it was it was too late. Wade was was sort of like uh, pretty ruthless on his own throne and and punished Clemens. And what a run from Jason Heaver to get to the semis as well. Uh, made it semi final. He only won his two card at Q School in January. He'll be uh, really encouraged by that, even if he did get spanked by uh, Clayton. Final man to mention for me on Thursday, Chaz Barstow doesn't even have a two card. He's getting into these events because. Um, some players are opting not to play. And what happens is they call up the, the next kind of people and invite them down. Well, Barstow is, is making the most of his opportunities. Every time he's turning up at these player championships, he's beating established players. And he knocked out Gerwin Price on his run to the quarterfinals on this day. I mean, to be making the last eight out of 128 professional fields when you haven't got a card is Brilliant, quite yeah. fantastic, really. So uh, he's a man I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of in future years. Well, he, he got an average of 106 in one of his games against An Andy Hamilton in one Very of the earlier player. rounds. But yeah, yeah, fair play to him. Um, day four was all about one player, really. Pine Man, Peter Snake, Bite Wright. Um, I wouldn't say it's a surprise that he's winning tournaments. We know Peter Wright will win tournaments. We've said that, but he cannot be relied on from a betting point of view. So he's done basically bugger all on days one, two and three. He's turned up, obviously, with a, with a slightly... Um, 
changed setup on day four and dominated the event. He's absolutely dominated day four, if you ask me. He's beat um, Gerwin Price with a degree of ease in the final 8-3, and um, Price's second final of the week. He's beat Joe Cullen, another four man in the semi-final, 7-2, averaged 103 there. I mean, it's, just, it's infuriating, really, but... You know, good to good to see him. You know, get a, get a win on the board. Just before I pass on to you there, by man, Christoph Ratajski, a man that we used to seeing um, consistently do well in these events, didn't have a good week, but did make the quarter final on day four. He actually got whitewashed on another day by Joe Cullen six six nil in in one of the earlier rounds. He actually played Joe Cullen again, Christoph, in the quarter final on day four. Came up short there, but that was my two takeouts from day four. Yeah, well, will the real Peter Wright please stand up? I mean, we've ju- we we know what he's we know what he's capable of. We we've talked about it on other videos, and and one thing I do want to say is um, I kind of touched on this concept in a previous video about a ceiling price for a player. You know, when they reach the the point in the market where the price is just too big, and even if they're out of form, you know that they're going to be winning something soon. That was the case for Peter Wright. He started in these players' championships events as a sort of six seven to one chance at the start of the year, and repeatedly going out early, pushed his price all the way out to about 14s and then inevitably he lands. Um, but are you willing to just blindly follow him until he pops? Probably not. But it's it's like you say, it's frustrating. Uh, averages of 104, 98, two 108 averages, 103 and 101 in the final. I mean, this was super, super impressive. This wasn't just like a scrappy uh, victory. This was like full throttle Peter Wright. And it's... Uh, it's a sending a message out ahead of the Premier League, isn't it? The last event before the Premier League starts, everyone's kind of discounted Peter Wright. And yet here he is, turns up and just for good measure, he spanks the world champion in the final 8-3 as well. Uh, just to remind everyone how good he is. Um, I just thought that all day he looked at it and he said as much in his interview. He said, I knew from round one, it's going to take something special to beat me today. To be fair, as you always have to do in these events, he dodged a little bit of a bullet against Steve West. Uh, that game was was very tight, 6-5. He, he just about got over the line. Um, and, you know, is, as is the nature of these events, you've got to look a little bit deeper into the form line because there are some players that are just played so, so well and then they just get either a little bit unlucky or they have a dip for three or four legs and that's their day done. But there's plenty of players in good nick and uh, Peter Wright, yeah, I mean, even he he said himself afterwards in his interview that inconsistencies in his game baffle him. Like <laughs> he, he, he said something along the lines of if I can if I could bottle this form and bring it to the Premier League it'd be great, but I can't. He said I might pick the darts up tomorrow and play terrible. It's just the way it goes. Um, it's bizarre, isn't it? You'd think somebody at that level would be able to like you know nail down consistency uh, at least to some kind of degree but it wouldn't be a surprise if Peter Wright rocks up first night of the Premier League and averages 85 it really wouldn't be a surprise he's just that kind of player um, but yeah he also had a little word for Michael Van Gerwen he was asked about his and Van Gerwen's As he struggles always this does. year yeah, and he said that he doesn't think Van Gerwen will win a TV title this year uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just to stir the pot a little bit more basically told him that he shouldn't be having a week off shouldn't be on holiday he should be at these events getting some practice in um, I'm sure a lot of people will agree with him. It's all a bit tongue in cheek in it between Peter. Oh, Wright he and does Peter. it all the time. I'm sure well, they get on. I'm the sure time. they get on great. But <laughs> it's just that there's a part of me that thinks this, these comments must really piss Van Gerwen off. You know, like he's sat watching it on his telly and Peter Wright's basically saying that he's not good enough and stuff like I mean. Uh, but yeah, he's he's having a bit of fun anyway when he says it, and it's uh, yeah. I look forward to them two meeting in the Premier League after that comment. Um, I, th- I think Peter Wright also said it's worth saying that he, he believes Johnny Clayton because he's got Johnny Clayton opening night of the Premier League and he said he believes Johnny Clayton is the best player in darts at the moment. So um, high praise from I Snake think he Pike said as that well. before as well. Yeah, he has. Yeah, it's not the first time this year he said that. Um, but yeah, this was a case of the players in form rising to the top because Price got to the final. Semi finalists, two names we've seen a lot of in this little super series: Brendan Dolan again which is remarkable from Brendan Dolan, a final and two semi-finals from nowhere. Uh, and Joe Cullen, again. I mean, Joe Cullen won't get the headlines from this Super Series, but by God, he was consistent. You know, quarter-finals pretty much all the time, a couple of semi-finals. Uh, he, he, always, he always takes a good performance to beat Joe Cullen, and uh, I expect him to pick up a, another player's championship or two before the calendar year is out, to be honest. And uh, I think this is the year he gets a TV title, Joe Cullen. I'll stick my neck on the line. I think he's going to win one of these TV events. Um, I really do. I think it's all coming together for him. Um, on Dolan, 
uh, what well, I, I mean, there's not a lot more to say, but you've got to, you've got to say that he must be the player who wishes there wasn't an extended break until the next Super Series. He's just rediscovered this sensational four, best form in years, and he's now he's got to wait a month for another competitive event, which is a, a shame. But uh, there'll be other. So it would be interesting. Someone like Dolan, who's and we spoke to a couple of guests about their practice routines. Um, does Brendan Dolan now go home and try and practice on, on his own in his garage or whatever it may be in his spare room to try and replicate what he's done in Milton Keynes? Or does he just do basically nothing? Because you can't replicate, even through Dots Connect, you know, with the with the live yeah. stuff, Dots at home, you can't replicate that the format of being amongst the hustle and bustle, under the pressure, you know. But I don't know, it'd be interesting to, to find out. Maybe we'll get Brendan on. Um, yeah. Just to... Sure. Um, just on the on the cold list, if you like, prime man for the week. Um, MVG didn't play. We know that Anderson won two games all week. Did not play on the final day. Um, Vandenberg, this is not going well for Dimitri Vandenberg. He's come back from this injury. He's gone out early. He's, he had a bit of a nightmare in the Super Series one. He's had another bit of a nightmare in Super Series two. Um, he's he's got he's won two games all week. So he's gone out in the first round twice. Gone out in the second round twice as well. But I mean, day three turns up. Beats Carol Sedlicek uh, with 105 average, but then goes out the next round with like an 88 average or something. Then, um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's uh, worrying times for Dimitri. He is in the Premier League as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'll be looking at. I don't know who's playing in the first week. I think he's got Van Gerwen. Well, uh, yeah, I'll be looking to be be, be betting uh, betting against uh, Vandenberg in that one. Well, probably a game I would avoid, to be honest. I've got question marks over both of them. And, and you're right. I mean, I, I put up Vandenberg as the best selection in that Premier League market at the, at the turn of the year. I agree with you. And I maintain that. I think he was the best uh, best selection at the prices. But um, it's but you can't help but be concerned. Uh, one caveat, I suppose, would be that he's never been the man for players' championship events, really. I know that there's not a lot of difference at the moment between the players' championship events and a TV event, given there's no crowds. But we do have to look at his last TV event performance. Um, obviously, he had that early exit at the Masters UK Open, so so, and he did he did play fantastically well at that World Championship. Now the knee injury and his form since the knee operation is the concern, and and he is definitely on the cold list for me. Another man on the cold list. I don't want to um, you know put him down, but Glenn Durant's having a really tough time at the moment. He just can't buy a win, and uh, averages are concerning as well. And, uh, ahead of his Premier League title defence, he would be hoping to arrive in at least some kind of good form. And it's going to be tough for Glenn. He needs to find it from somewhere. And, and I guess with players like uh, Durant and Vandenberg, you're just hoping that um, the prestige of a big tournament is going to drag them up and, and bring the best out of them. Um, a few players that I just want to give a mention to that didn't win but did impress me. I've already mentioned a couple of them. Jose was fantastic. I mean, the last three days when he exited... He went out with averages of 98, a ton, and 103. So, you know, he's, he's getting beaten despite playing well. And I, I'm not too worried about that. I thought that was a good cobwebs blown off ahead of the Premier League for him. Heta, I, 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 you know, we spoke to Damon a couple of weeks ago and he said he was he was confident that he would put that uh, U, the UK Open performance behind him. He did. He looked really good again. You know, multiple averages. He, av- he averaged 111 one day and, and you know, multiple ton plus averages. He just had a tendency to throw in the odd off, get off day, but that can happen at these players' championships. And it, he looks like in a much better place uh, than we saw him at the UK Open. Dirk van Dijvenboerde, he's going to win something soon. You know, him and Joe Cullen, I think, are both you know bound to win something soon because their performances have just gone on to the next level for me. Um, I'd be very interested in his prices at the next Super Series at, at the end of April. Um, Ryan Searle had a good week, very consistent, going deep. You know, a couple of quarterfinals, beat a lot of uh, household names, continues to improve. And final word for me from uh, Alan Suter, uh, again, just uh, showing that he could compete with anyone on the PDC circuit. Seems to thrive on playing the big names. I wonder if there's just a little bit of a, you know, I should have been playing these guys for a long time. I want to show them what I'm all about kind of thing. And, and uh, yeah, he's certainly done that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, that wraps up the players in form, the players out of form, the talking points from the Super Series Volume 2. And then we're straight into the Premier League, aren't we soon, Pine Man? So we'll be uh, doing a video on the Premier League separately and we'll uh, leave that in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon. Cheers, guys. Mm-hmm.